Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Amen. Isn't it good to be in God's house this morning? Amen. I know you just made your way to your seat, but let's let's stand. We're gonna pray and get into some worship. So we're gonna worship, and then uh, the kids will go up to the kids' service uh, right after we pray. Father, we thank you for the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come in and touch our hearts this morning. And uh, we give you this day, Lord. It's your day, and uh, our hearts are open and receptive to what you want to speak to us this morning. We pray over Pastor Roger as he brings the word today. Would your anointing fall on it? Lord, would our hearts and our ears be open to receive all that you have for us, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful community, Lord. And we love you, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's worship.
best fighting stance is a, is a stance on your knees. Amen? Amen. That's how we win the battles. Amen. We're going to sing a classic, How Great Is Our God.
happy for you to be with this church. Amen. that you guys can come out to. There's just, you'll see it. People need you. People really, really need you. I mean, some people came out last Saturday to help me out and they saw it firsthand. A uh, lady had nothing else, but that, that's what it was. And someone reached out to her and she's like, how did you know? Mm-hmm. We're like, we don't know, we just showed up. <laughs> so we didn't know. Um, so yeah, I encourage you. I mean, I, I love to keep on preaching about Tri-State Pantry, but we're just a small dot in the in the world trying to make a difference. But there's so many other ways. If you can't come out and help us, call somebody. You know, make sure the world is not crumbling on their own. Mm-hmm. Help them out. Um, so yeah, the announcements are always here in this beautiful pamphlet. Well, actually not pamphlet, this pamphlet is only two pages. <laughs> so for sure, I've learned that the hard way. Uh, um, but yeah, you know, keep, keep these people in prayer. And keep yourself in prayer as well. Um, a lot of answers. I needed to hear those three songs. They were powerful. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I can keep going on and on, so I'm going to stick to the script. Um, today we're going to read, um, actually, if I could call it the ushers so we can pray for, for the offering, if you guys don't mind coming up. Um, 
And also, uh, I'm gonna steal some thunder, but uh, Pastor Rogers gonna also speak more about it. But they're gonna have her baby, and this is an amazing time to pray for them. New life, that's amazing, right? So Pastor Rogers will share more. I just wanna steal some thunder. <laughs> so, um, let, let's pray. Your Father, we're just so grateful and thankful, Lord, that when the world is crumbling, you're always there to, to speak to us the way we need it. The Father, as <coughs> We use all these gifts and skills and callings, Lord. Help us give back so this can continue, Lord, so we can help families, so we can build your kingdom, so we can fortify others with the word of God, Lord. May this offering be multiplied for this ministry, Lord. Thank you for all the souls and all the hearts are here, Lord. Some of us are able to give back, some of us, oh, we don't have enough, Lord, but we give you what we have. is being collected today, you guys want to open your Bible to Matthew 5, 17 through 30. Today we're going to read. We're going to read. We're going to get in it. We got some more verses to discuss. So again, Matthew 5, verses 17 through 30. If you didn't bring a Bible, your phone has an amazing Bible. If you didn't bring that, then there's one outside. So the word of God says, do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass away from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever the annuls one of the least of these commandments, and so teaches others shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that ancients were told, you shall not commit murder, and whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that every, everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court, and whoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. And whoever shall say, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. If therefore you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there remembering that your brother has something against you, leave your offering before the altar and go your way. First read. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present your offering. Make friends quickly with your opponent at law while you're with him on the way, in order that your opponent may not deliver you to the judge, and the judge to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. Truly I say to you, you shall not come out of here until you have paid up the last cent. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you, that everyone who looks at a woman to lust for her has committed adultery with her, with her already in his heart. And if your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw it from you. For it is better for you that one of the parts of your body perish than, your, than for your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. For it is better for you that one of the parts of your body perish than for the whole body to go into hell. That is the word of God. Uh, thank you, Lord, for, for this amazing opportunity to pray over Pastor Roger as he delivers this message to, to us. Um, Lord, let us hear you and feel you through the scripture and through the message of Pastor Roger. I encourage and empower him to tell us the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Pablo and greetings, mighty warriors. Greetings. Good to see you in the house today. God is good. All the time. All the time. It was a great time of singing. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, we had a birth at uh, 1.35 a.m. this morning. Uh, Megan gave birth to Indiana Melody Beck. Uh, six pounds, five ounces. 
church. Uh, that's one way to have church growth. We've had two, two babies in a, about a month's time, so, so that's great, great news. So um, we rejoice with them. And if you see Maria Miller, uh, give her a hearty thanks as well. Uh, she's uh, she's filling in for Megan for the next three weeks with the, with the Lighthouse kids, and so uh, we appreciate uh, we appreciate her work. Um, uh, let's 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 pray for uh, the backs, and let's uh, let's pray for um, uh, those names on the prayer sheet. A uh, special prayer this morning for uh, Don and Neva Kaiser. Uh, Don, uh, Neva come, came down with a little bit of COVID. Uh, she's going to be okay, but they need to they need to isolate for ten days, and they've been so faithful to our to our work here. Lord, thank you for um, thank you for the joy of uh, of, uh, of a new child. And, we're grateful for Aviana, uh, Melody Beck, and we're, we're grateful that the birth went well, and uh, Zach and Megan are proud new parents. And uh, we pray for many who are struggling with illnesses and sicknesses. It seems to be there's been a little bit more COVID going around lately, and we pray especially for Neva that your he healing hand would be upon her. Uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Help us to hear your word. May we be drawn closely to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so I've been away a while, and, and the church has uh, gone right on. Probably better without me sometimes, you know. But um, uh, two weeks ago, we started uh, a new sermon series on, on the Sermon on the Mount. And we're, over the summer, we're, we're, we have a ten-part series on the greatest message uh, that Jesus ever delivered. I always tell people... Uh, if you've never read anything in the Bible, at least read Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 7. That's the Sermon on the Mount. It's the most powerful teaching uh, you will find in the entire Bible. Uh, two weeks ago, we had the Navy chaplain, the, uh, uh, Jerry Berthelet here, and he gave a wonderful message on the Beatitudes. And uh, I missed it last Sunday, but uh, uh, Jennifer stood up and quoted the Beatitudes from, uh, from memory. Good job. And uh, she, she got an NIV study Bible for that. That's called Works Righteousness. <laughs> but enjoy that Bible. We appreciate, uh, appreciate you learning that. Um, and so uh, Chaplain Berthelet gave a message on the Beatitudes, uh, a message that reminds us that we need to be humble. We need to be humble as we... Uh, walk before the Lord. And then last week, uh, Zach Beck gave a great message on, on being light in the world and being the salt of the earth. And that's who we are as Christians. We're, we're a light in this dark world and we're a preserving influence, an influence that brings flavor to our world. And don't forget that. People, people look to you as for, for hope and for light and for joy. So today, uh, looking at Matthew 5, uh, 17, uh, through uh, 30, and this, in many ways, it's similar to the Beatitudes. It, it reminds us to be humble. Verse 17, Jesus says, Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And when Jesus said those words, he was referencing the Jewish Bible. Uh, the Jewish Bible is called the Tanakh. It's on your bulletin cover. You can see a, a copy of it there. Uh, and, and the Tanakh, the Jewish Bible, is identical to our Old Testament. It's the same 39 books. It's the same words. But the order is a little bit different. And if you, I think in your sermon outline, you can see the actual order of the books in the Tanakh. In our, in our Old Testament, uh, we start, the Protestant Bible starts with Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And the Tanakh starts the exact same way. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The Protestant Bible ends with, what's the last book of the Protestant Bible? Malachi. But if you look at the Tanakh, you'll see there's 11 more books after Malachi. Psalms, Job, Proverbs, Ruth, Song of Songs, and, and so forth. And so the order is a little bit different. Uh, but when Jesus was talking about uh, not abolishing the law and the prophets, he was talking about the first two-thirds 
of the Jewish Bible. The first is, is broken into three parts, the law, the prophets, and the writings. And so Jesus was talking about the first two parts of the Jewish Bible. The word Tanakh is an acronym. Uh, T-A stands for Torah, which is law. Uh, N-A is Navaim, which is Hebrew for prophets. And K-H is Katavim, which is Hebrew for writings. And so the Tanakh is, a, is, a, is an ac acronym that tells of the three-day division of the Jewish Bible, which is our Old Testament. But, but Jesus was saying, I did not come to do away with the law. I did not come to do away with the prophets. And what Jesus, in essence, is saying is, I've not come here to do away with the holiness of Almighty God. <laughs> You know, God gave us the Ten Commandments uh, in, in Leviticus 22. He said, do not profane my holy name. I am the Lord who made you holy. And, and we come before the true and the living God with, with fear and trembling. Jesus is not coming to take away the holiness of the one who created us in his image. He calls us to be holy. He calls us to honor him with our lives, and, and we don't, we don't uh, uh, live our lives lightly in, in light of that. We need to live our lives in the fear of the true and the living God. And don't forget that. Some, some people uh, talk about, well, it's reverence and awe. It's fear. It's the king who made you, and you're going to stand before him uh, in judgment someday. And so Jesus is saying, I didn't come to do away with that high holy standard that you read about in the law of Moses. And he's also saying, I didn't come to do away with the message of the prophets either. And uh, I encourage you to read the prophets. Nobody likes to read the prophets because, because the prophets are always saying, you're a sinner. You've fallen short of the holiness of God. You need to repent. You need to get your lives back on track. Every single one of the prophets are basically saying that message. Shape up. You've fallen away from God. And Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with that message. Um, but uh, it's, it's the same message of holiness today as it ever has been. You know, we, we want to live our lives before God in a way that honors him. Uh, so Jesus didn't come to do away with that. And, and this message that he gives in the Sermon on the Mount, he's really targeting a special audience. He's, he's targeting especially people who think they are holy on their own strength, who think they're, they're, they're holier than thou, they're self-righteous. I have never murdered. I have never committed adultery. I have never stolen anything. You know, the, the, in effect, if you look at verse 20, uh, Jesus says, I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you certainly will not enter the kingdom of heaven. The Pharisees, the teachers of the law, these were men who dedicated their lives to the Jewish religion. They were set apart from everybody else. They were the holy ones. They were the, they were the ones we looked up to. It's like I'm standing in line on Judgment Day at the pearly gates, and Mother Teresa's in front of me, <laughs> and Billy Graham's in front of me, and they get turned away. Oh, no. They're not making it in. What am I going to do? <laughs> or, or, or on Judgment Day, you come here every Sunday, and you listen to me, and you're standing behind me, or you're standing behind Matt, and you know, our, our worship leader, and you're standing behind Pastor Peter, and we all get turned away. <laughs> what have I done in my life? You know, uh, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, uh, you're not going to make it. This is, this is heavy. This is, this is earth-shaking. If the Pharisees and the teachers of the law can't make it in, who's going to make it in? You know, and, and it's similar to, remember the story of the rich young ruler? In Matthew 19, he, he comes up to Jesus and says, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That's a great question. I hope you all ask that question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, you know the law. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Honor your mother, father. Don't steal. Don't gossip, all this stuff. 
And I, well, I've done this from my youth. And Jesus says, okay, sell everything you have. Give it to the poor. Come follow me. And the rich young ruler walked away sad because he didn't want to give up his riches. And uh, Jesus said it's uh, easier for a camel yeah. to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to make it into heaven. And everybody says, well, who can get saved? And, of course, the message is with, with God, all things are possible. But uh, the Apostle Paul hammers on this a little bit. Take a look at uh, Romans 3. Uh, Romans, keep your finger in Matthew. Romans 3, verse 10. Paul saying, there's no one righteous, not one. There's no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They Together they become worthless. There's no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of bitterness and, and cursing. Their feet are swift to, uh, to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Verse 20, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. Are you all inspired now, church? <laughs> Nobody. Jesus did not come to do away with this holiness standard. Jesus came to save us. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus came to, to remind us that we don't get to heaven on our own righteousness on our own strength. In fact, Jesus is suggesting that what we have here on Sunday mornings is really a cosmic AA meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Yvonne. My name's Roger. I'm a sinner. I need some help. Hello, Carl. My name's Roger. I'm a sinner. I need some, I need some help. I mean, that's what Jesus is, is pointing out. You know, he's not coming to do away with the, the great holy standards and the great majesty. How great is our God, we say. He's not coming to do away with that. But he is, he is reminding us that we need to humble ourselves before the Lord. And, uh, and, and that's when we will be lifted up. You know, this whole Sermon on the Mount series began with the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Those are the ones who recognize their own sinfulness. You know, they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn and wail as you look at your own sinful estate. They will be comforted. Blessed are the merciful, not the power hungry. Blessed are the merciful. You know, Amen. they will obtain mercy. Amen. And it's the whole sense of humility uh, that Jesus is pointing out. And uh, as, as he goes a little deeper into his message, he, he gives us... Uh, examples of the kind of heart attitude that we should have. And he picks on two of the two of the Ten Commandments. He picks on number six, thou shalt not murder. And he, and he picks on number seven, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. And there were people walking around in Jesus' day saying, I never committed murder. I'm a good person. I never committed adultery. I'm a good person. I never smoked. I never prayed. I never went around with women that did. <laughs> you know, um, and I, I never, I've never murdered anybody. I've, I've never, I've never slept around. I've, I've never slept with anybody other than my wife. I'm a good person, right, Jesus? Amen. Uh, and, uh, but as you read this, he starts to hammer it down a little bit. Take a look at the verse, verse 21. You have heard it said to the people. Long ago, you shall not murder. Amen? Amen? Anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. I'm good so far, right? I haven't murdered anybody. <laughs> but I tell you that anyone who's angry with their brother or sister mm -hmm. will be subject to judgment. How we doing, church? <laughs> you been angry at anybody yet? Have you been angry at anybody this week? You know? Or go a little further. Uh, Anyone who, uh, again, anyone who says to a brother or a sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. Now that word Raka is a fascinating word. It's only used one time in the entire New Testament, and it basically means 
empty head, <laughs> numb skull, good for nothing. Have you ever called somebody a numbskull or a good-for-nothing fool? You know, uh, maybe you've even done that this week. Or how about anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Is there anybody here innocent of all this stuff? I, I fall flat on my sword. You know, so uh, let's try another one, Jesus says. Let's look at commandment number seven. Verse 27 says, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. And the Apostle Paul, in 1 Corinthians 6, he says, flee sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside of his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. That's heavy stuff. But I'm, I'm innocent. I've been faithful to my wife. Right, Jesus? You know, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. But let's go a little further. Jesus says in verse 28, I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. How many of you fellows here are innocent of that one? <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty of that, I'll tell you what. Remember, remember President Jimmy Carter when he was running for the White House and then 1976, he did an interview and said, yeah, I've lusted in my heart. And, you know, that shook the whole world up. He, he was being honest, you know. Uh, and probably ladies do, too. I don't know, but I know guys battle that one. Uh, we're, we're not innocent. We're, we're not holy. And the prophets point this out. And Jesus is saying, I'm not come, I've not come to do away with the high and holy standards of God. And as we think about this, um, you know, who possibly can stem the flow of anger or lust for even one day? Who is perfectly faithful in his commitments, totally without deceit? But God has built a bridge, and God will lead you across that bridge. None of us are innocent. Uh, you don't get into heaven by your own righteousness. Self, self righteousness doesn't make it. God righteousness does. And um, we have this sin problem. Humanity has always had this sin problem. Uh, the laws and the prophets point it out. And Jesus does soft pedal it. Uh, we uh, angry explosions that we have, whether they're in our soul or verbally, those are sinful. Uh, lustful thoughts that we have, whether they're expressed outwardly or inwardly, uh, they're sinful. And, and uh, Jesus came not to do away with the law of prophets. Jesus came to save us. Jesus came to offer us hope. Amen? Amen. He came to offer us hope in this Amen. sinful estate. And we just had the vacation Bible school, and often at vacation Bible school, they teach, teach the kids the ABC. The ABCs. Admit that you're a sinner, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and confess your faith openly. You know, that's, that's the ABCs. Admit you're a sinner. Um, that's, that's what Jesus is driving at. I heard about this uh, preacher in the Deep South, and he had a big, large congregation. And he says, is there anybody out there without sin? Anybody? Anybody without sin? Please, you know, raise your hand if you're without sin. Anybody here without sin? Raise your hand. No, but, the, oh. I thought you said Jim. Oh, Tom. <laughs> Tom's heard that joke before. But the, there was one little guy in the back of the church, and he raised his hand, and, and the pastor said, Sir, stand up. Stand up. We'll try this again, Tom. Stand up. You raised your hand. Stand up. Are you without sin? I thought you were talking about Jim. Oh. <laughs> okay. Admit. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He came. He came to die for you. He didn't come to take away the law and the prophets. He came to take away your sin. He came to die for you. And when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you will be saved. Uh, and then confess. 
Confess to others that you have this newfound belief. That's a, that's a, we had the baptisms uh, two weeks ago, and that's a powerful way of confessing that I'm a follower of, of Jesus Christ. We, we confess him with the way in which we live our lives, and we, we confess him with our words, and we're not ashamed of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, this is why Jesus came, to be that bridge to take us from our sinful, uh, fallen state uh, to bring us uh, into a glorified state where we know the Lord of glory and you have peace in your soul. Now the law is still important. You know, he didn't do away with the law. It's still very, very important. Uh, in the New Testament, we're told that the law is a schoolmaster that brings us to Christ. And often, uh, a lot of people get converted when they're right down on the bottom. You know, they've realized they've totally messed up their lives, and it's God's law that reminds them they've messed up their lives. And that's the point where people often repent and, and believe. But the law is still important. It leads people to Christ. I like, uh, I got about three other metaphors. I think the law, you know, illustrates the power of the law. One of them is a mirror. One of them is a bridle that you might put on a horse. And the third one would be a lighthouse. And let me let me give you an example of the mirror. You know, we wake up in the morning. What do we do? Well, look at that mirror and say, "Man, what a mess! <laughs> I better do something with this hair, with this makeup. I, I, this is bad, bad news." You know, and when you're and that improves us. You know, that mirror helps us. Uh, you know, and, and when you're dating somebody, you know, I don't know if anybody here is dating, but if, if you're dating somebody, you pay a lot more attention to that mirror, you know. Is he going to like my hair? You know, am I looking all right today? And, you know, and you, you spend some time in the mirror because you want to look good. And But when you get married, you don't put the mirror away. You know, your husband or wife still wants you looking good. You still need that mirror, even though even though you've been blessed with a, with a marital union. Uh, the, the mirror is still helpful. Can I get an amen on that? <laughs> and then the bridle, my, my dad grew up breaking horses, and my grandfather broke horses also. And you put a bridle on to, uh, to uh, <coughs> snap that horse into shape. I've never done it. I don't know much about it. But, uh, but it, I, I understand there's some pretty uh, wild horses. Uh, one guy went to this horse farm once, and we got horses for everybody. And, and this one guy said, well, uh, uh, I've never ridden a horse. And, and the, and, the, and the horse farmer said, well, I got a horse just for you. Here's a horse that's never been ridden. <laughs> but you need, the, you need the bridle to, uh, to, to train that horse, to train that horse to get obedience to commands. And then once that horse is trained, you still keep the bridle on, and you don't jerk it and yank it around. You know, the, the horse might need a little gentle reminder once in a while, and that's kind of what the law does in our life. We're saved by grace, but the law is there to help keep us on track. And the same with the lighthouse. You know, you, you go down to San Diego and you see the point below the lighthouse and you know, there's all kinds of navigational aids down there. And the first time the captain of a ship pulls into San Diego Harbor, he's paying very close attention to those buoys and that lighthouse and all the navigational aids. He wants to get in safely to harbor without running the ship aground. But once you get more familiar with bringing ships in and out of San Diego, you don't need them as much, but you still want them there and you still watch them and pay attention to them. And that's, that's why, so we don't forget about the law. You know, we don't forget about the law. We don't forget about the prophets. Continue to read them. Continue to grow by them. Continue to learn from them. And then finally, um, you know, don't give up. Don't give up on the spiritual battles that you're facing. I got all these lusts. I got all these anger problems. I just might as well give up. I'm saved anyway. No, that's not the attitude. You, know, you got to put on the whole armor of God, Amen. and you got to fight those spiritual battles that are deep down in your soul. And uh, and, and and Jesus, in fact, and he said, uh, if you've got an anger problem, uh, you before you offer your gift at the altar, before you take communion, you know you you get that issue resolved with with your neighbor that you've been angry with, and uh, and, and it's. Uh, it's, you can't control the other person, but you can certainly control yourself. And if you've done something wrong, you need to apologize to your neighbor. He may not accept it, but nonetheless, you, you've got to be humble enough to apologize. That's, that's what Jesus said. Wrestle with that stuff. 
If you're, if you're struggling with lust, uh, Jesus used a little bit of hyperbole. He said, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your hand uh, offends you, cut it off. And I, I remember a story from back in 2003. There was a young man who was uh, climbing uh, solo in the Canyon, Canyon Lands National Park in the southeast Utah. Anybody been there? A beautiful park. And he was climbing solo, and he, he dislodged an 800-pound boulder, and it rolled down and caught his right arm in a crevice. And he was there for three days. He couldn't, he, he was, nobody knew where he was. He couldn't get out of there. And he had a pocket knife, and he was trying to move that boulder with a pocket knife, and he was using, using some of his block and tackle and trying to, trying to move that stone. Couldn't do it at all. He ran out of water, and he took that pocket knife, and he cut his arm off below the, below the right elbow. And somehow he didn't pass out. I think he must have put a tourniquet on. And he rappelled 65 feet down the cliff. And he walked seven miles to the sheriff's office. And they said if he hadn't have done that, he would have died. You know, he, he saved his life by cutting his arm off. And, and uh, you spend your whole time looking at pornography on the internet, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very destructive to your soul. That's, yeah. that's the message uh, that, that Jesus has given. Fight the good fight. Uh, don't give up. Honor, honor God with your life. Um, Jesus doesn't soft pedal it, he, but he offers a way of, of escape. And so uh, as, we, uh, as we close up here today, uh, let me encourage you to uh, read the law. Let me encourage you to read the prophets. Uh, you'll see yourself in there as you read it. And then uh, don't despair. Uh, remember that Jesus came that you might have life and that you might have it to the full. Uh, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into this world to condemn the world. God sent his son into this world to save the world. Amen? Amen. So Jesus did not come to do away with the law and the prophets. He came to save. He came to save you and you and you and you, and he loves every one of you. And don't, don't beat yourself up because you don't measure up. You measure up because Christ measured up. He went to the cross for you. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. So, um, that's enough of that one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments, thoughts, insights? Uh, Floyd? Yes, I have a question. <laughs> I've read where there's been 60 million or so abortions since the 70s. Now, is that 60 million murders? Well, it's, take, it's taken a life, isn't it? And the second part is, once that child is aborted, is he immediately taken to heaven? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe in a gracious God. I, 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 I would say yes. I, 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 I'd say yes and amen. I mean, there's no, you know, um, God's a gracious God. He's the judge. I, I, I love the grace of God. And those those little aborted fetuses have no uh, sense of right or wrong. You know. Does that answer? Okay, what was the first part about the murder? Yeah, it's 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 murder. It's you know, murder. It's murder. Yeah. And but you know, and, and, and it's a hot I don't preach about it much, it's a hot bed, hot political issue. You know, abortion is sad. Uh, and uh, but there's many ways of murdering. You know, we, we murder with our words a lot too, and we got to keep that in perspective. Okay, the third part: Can a person be forgiven for that? Oh yeah, yeah. What's what's going to keep you away from God, Floyd? What's what's going to keep you separated from God? What's going to keep you out of heaven? Disbelief in Jesus Christ. That's it. That's the, that's the only thing that will separate you from the love of God. There's forgiveness, forgiveness at the cross. Good questions. Anybody else? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, when you mentioned about the camel, you know, the eye, yeah. well, the eye of a needle is, is a gate where it's, it's, it's like a, it's like an eye, and back then the camel had to get down real low to get in there, so yeah. it wasn't easy for him to get yeah. into the, the eye of a needle. <laughs> is that an urban myth, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> Carl's been there. There's places that people point to and say, this is the eye of the needle or whatever. But yeah. Likely, anything that's in the city of Jerusalem that way now wasn't there when Jesus was mm -hmm. the first mm -hmm. Yeah. 
<coughs> could be, could be, but I think I think the image of a camel going through the actual eye of a needle is even more incredible. Because what they're saying is, yes, the camel can get through, but what Jesus is saying, the camel can't get through. You need God. Right. Anybody else? We good? All right, we're up here, team. Ready to go? Let's uh, let's pray. Yeah, one more. Let me, let me pray for you. So close your eyes and open up your hearts. And uh, if you know your ABCs, have you uh, admitted that you're a sinner? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you confessing them to others? Uh, if if you've never believed, raise your hand up. I'd like to pray for you. Anybody here? We're here today. We're all good. So thank you, Lord, for this reminder uh, to be humble, this reminder to be respectful, uh, this, this reminder that uh, you have not come to take away from the holiness of Almighty God, but you, you've come to save us. And we love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the greatest gift of eternal life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
we thank you that it's not by our own righteousness. Mm -hmm. Nothing that we could do or earn our way in, but you paid the ultimate sacrifice once and for all so that we could we could be saved, but more, even greater, to have this intimate relationship with you mm -hmm. now and forever for eternity, Lord. We thank you for that great gift in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Uh, Dr. Carl, come on down. And, uh, good to have you in town. Yeah, good to be here. Offer the benediction. And uh, let's see, if you need prayer today, Pastor Tom's in the house still. Yes. Pastor Tom's in the house. Kathy, uh, would you be willing to pray with the ladies if, uh, if you need them? And uh, we got some refreshments outside, so uh, hang around a little bit. Say hello to somebody you don't know today. Amen? Amen. Carl, bless us with the word. Thank you. I love the word benediction. It's a good word. Thank you for the good word today, Pastor. Yes. Romans 8 begins this way. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit may god bless each of you today with the knowledge the full knowledge that there is no condemnation now because of christ jesus amen amen, amen. amen.